Mazzy injector. Working great. I can, I don't have to fill a fertilizer injector bowl with urine or fish emulsion or comfrey tea or anything I'm making. I can just bring a bucket over of whatever it is and uh, put it down here, add some more water to it just so there's more of it. And then this meters the injection amount. You can adjust the resistance on the outflow with this ball valve, which changes how much the venturi that's in this wants to actually suck um, from your fertilizer source. The rest of this is, well, all of this is somewhat um, regular. I mean, th th this isn't anything new, but it's new for me. And a lot of people don't know about it. Um, this is just a regular old drip, and drip irrigation, drip emitter um, filter, which is very easy to take off and just spray it with the water, clean it off, put it back on, super reusable. This is a timer, which I don't use much, but if I'm not here, I do. Um, I gotta clean this up a little bit, but you really wanna mount this on a board with some wire. It's just a nice way of uh, mounting everything, keeping it clean. These Odeker clamps are awesome. They save a lot of money from the hose bibs, or uh, just regular hose clamps, stainless hose clamps. But um, yeah, I mean, I want some of this removable because I, I wanna pull this whole thing in the winter. Um, because there's a lot, you know, there's $60 of material here. Uh, most of it's not going to go bad in the sun too quickly, but I want to preserve it and I don't use it all winter. Or I could just throw an EPDM tarp over it. I'll certainly bring the timer in because that's electronic. Um, so I do have hose clamps where I want to be able to pull the thing off. The whole thing is just as I said on this board and I just have a lot of half inch rod. And so I just tack welded a little piece on and then a, and then a, um, a bracket so I could just bolt it to this. The whole thing literally lifts. This is on a sleeve. I can just lift the whole thing off. So then I can adjust the drip system. You can hear it. It's hard to hear, it's windy. But I can send it or just send it into the greenhouse. And then of course, each zone can be turned on or off. These ones I like more because they're right at the main line. And uh, yeah, everything is um, just pumped with the uh, the fertigation, and I'm really happy. Wow, it's a hot one. Today's like 90. It never gets to be 90 here, really. These IBC totes, which I'm using, I mainly got for the cages for firewood use, which I think I made a video on. I'm using the, the plastic interiors for squash growing. They look a little sad right now just because it's so hot. Um, it's plenty warm. It's plenty, plenty dry, uh, wet, moist. Um, I have some drip emitters in here, so I can also turn this whole squash. You can hear it turn right on. Um, goes down for all the squashes. And this was a bindweed infested mess, and it's super sandy and harsh. Uh, so I got to really build the soil on this. But this is a way of like growing squash while colonizing new garden space so then all the material the green matter is going to be dead in here can rake the wood chips and then basically just expand the garden to this area and then the squash ibc totes or fertile mounds i like to do can just keep expanding into the front yard because there's no need to grow squash in your garden a lot of people do it but um it's a real waste of garden space because squash just needs a pile of fertility to grow in. It doesn't need um, garden space. It doesn't need gar nice garden beds. It just needs fertile mounds. I finally, because we had such a drought in June, put everything on drip. Hadn't had drip. I've done drip for clients, but I haven't had to put um, stuff on drip. But this is super dry year and a really dry garden. So this is cool, female flower. As you can see, the 